my name is Riley Scott, and I'm the creative director for Right as Rain. So when we were first uh, creating the concept for Right as Rain, we originally were thinking of having four villages, with each of them representing a different form of weather. So Fiorel, the first one, is our snow village, which was originally a springtime village overcome by snow. So our color palette is very icy, lots of cool colors, uh, blues and purples. Um, we originally wanted it to take place in a forest and be very spooky. Um, eventually, it sort of got opened up a bit to look more like the concept art. Um, with our NPCs, uh, they were based around different types of plants, sort of like nymphs. So we had them as trees, and for our enemy, we were thinking just a representation of the ice. Hexanest is our jungle village. Um, this village is overcome by excessive heat. So originally, it was going to be a very lively jungle with lots of plants and overgrown greenery. And after the heat, it became very dried up, um, lots of brown, muted tones from the withering plants. Our NPCs and enemies in this town are based around bugs, so our NPCs are more humanoid while our enemies are more lifelike to bugs. Gustopolis is our town overcome by wind. So this town is composed of floating islands that are all interconnected in the air. Our original concept was to have all of the islands interconnected by giant overgrown vines but eventually we settled on a more steampunk concept. So, reflected in our NPC, we have some mechanical wings that show that they kind of fly around to get around, and our enemy is a manifestation of the wind element. Sardinia is our rain village. This village is overcome by excessive rain. Um, we use a palette that's filled with blues and teals and greens, and it's a sort of ordinary coastal village with the only difference being that all of the residents are fish. So these fish um, have humanoid legs. They walk around on two feet, but their faces are still very fish-like. And our enemies are also different forms of these bipedal fish. So these are our original concepts for our main character, Aira. She is a witch with a cat companion, and she has the capabilities of both light and dark magic. So these are some of our concept art. Um, we tried out a bunch of different color palettes until eventually settling on one where she has light purple hair and black clothes with purple details. Hello, my name is Galen McGee and I am the producer for Writer's Rain. So we needed to go ahead and make sure that the game worked properly and so for our pro prototype we ended up doing some game testing and here we're creating ice blocks and we are using that as a platform to get across a river. This was essential for our puzzle process that we would be building on to later. Here we have a demonstration of how choosing the type of magic that you would like to use to resolve a puzzle would actually change your reputation and allow you to go down further in the light path or the dark path. Here we're going to choose the wind spell which allows you to retrieve the apple and that goes through the light path option where if you decided to use heat and burn down the tree you don't get the apple and the sky changes to show that your reputation is becoming more infamous as you become darker. And for this we have a rain puzzle that we were using to try to demonstrate how to use your rain magic. We decided to go ahead and use a system of combat similar to Final Fantasy and Persona. We, this is a turn-based combat system where Hera, our main character, would be fighting alongside her companion, Looney, and the enemies would be required to be killed or spared based on your actions, which would also lead you down the light or dark path. The vertical slice was our first representation of our entire project as a whole. So with our vertical slice, we wanted to show an example of all four of our villages, as well as some of our puzzles that we wanted to incorporate into each village. When we were creating the different puzzles, we wanted to make them all feel very intuitive, but use different forms of weather magic in different ways. So while we were creating the vertical slice, we wanted to show a little piece of each of our future levels all combined into one level to sort of um, put them against each other and show the differences between them all. 
So this is our early form of the wind village, and this is our early form of the rain village, with some of our starter NPCs as well. Interactions with all of the different NPCs was important to us just to make the game feel very lifelike and realistic for our main character. So all of these different dialogue options and interactions could sort of change her motivations towards wanting to go on the light route or the dark route. So as we worked on the game, it was really important to me um, while doing the dialogue to make sure that her answers were sort of morally gray until you decided which path you were on. And then the player can sort of interpret how each of her answers kind of reflects uh, what kind of character you want Aira to be. Each of our villages has a main quest with two different solutions, but our core form of gameplay, aside from the puzzles, is our turn-based combat system. Along with using all different forms of weather magic towards your enemies and yourself, you also are given the choice to determine the fate of the enemies. Once we had proven that we had the capability and the vision to bring Rider's Reign to life, we worked tirelessly towards that goal and began to create a world that we hope that you can find yourself lost and amidst in a fantasy adventure that is designed to reflect your choices. So here we're going to show a quick example of all the other processes brought to its fruition. So at this point, you start off the game. This is the mentor that gives you some basic information on how to play. And you begin your tutorial quest where you get to help Johnny retrieve that apple from the tree that we saw in our prototype gameplay. Your choices for using light or dark options will be carried over. And as we advance in the game, we were able to do additional features and juice, such as adding an inventory system and little beautiful art icons to indicate when you had collected something. Once you complete the tutorial level, you're introduced to the combat, which shows you all the basics that you need for being able to face the dangers that are out in the world. You then also get to see and learn the effects of either killing or sparing your enemies, which also will attribute towards your overall reputation. We added additional features such as a spell book, which had different types of descriptions for the spells, as well as other advanced spells as time went on. This is the final rendering of the Wind City, Gustopolis. This is the final rendering of Ferella, our snow village. This is our coastal village, Sardinia. And finally, our heat jungle village, Hexanex. We thank you so much for joining us, and we hope that you play our game and love it as much as we have in making it.